Hello there, and welcome back to my weekly Wednesday live Q&A. I am Juha Rokangas at your service on a mission from the god of electric, electric guitars, whoever that may be, <laughs> watching down on us from the skies or maybe grinning at us from the underworld. <clears throat> Pick your favorite. I'm good either way. Um, so today we're going to talk about guitar bridges. What makes a good bridge? Uh, first of all, this is a, a, a huge topic, impossible to do much more than scratch the surface in this one broadcast. But as always, I promise to do my best. Um, on general level, my approach to this topic is, I would say, stone cold pragmatic. To me, a good bridge in a guitar is a piece of hardware that just works, just works. It stands the wear and tear. In other words, the playing of the instrument for years and years. It is a part that can be repaired and to which spare parts are available as well. A good bridge is designed well so that it's you know, nice for the picking hand, no sharp edges, screws grinding your skin off. Um, a good bridge is made of quality materials. It has a quality plating. If it is plated, not all good bridges are plated necessarily. Um, and a good bridge to me, it is also, it's manufactured in an ethically decent environment meaning that the employees get paid somewhat fairly you know so the the very cheap i try not to go there too iffy for me I, I would rather look for options that are made in countries where these things are somewhat controlled by laws and regulations so that's about that hey i can see some familiar names there mibu hey damien nice to see you there um okay I've pulled up a few examples of different bridge designs, approaches. Mostly these are the so-called common archetypes, so that as many of you as possible can hopefully get something beneficial to your playing, to your gear choices out of this broadcast. So yeah, let's dive in. Um, Let's see, we begin from the Telecaster. You know, what is the secret of the Telecaster sound? Well, it's a sum of more than one particular thing, but the bridge has a crucial role to play in this. Why so? Because of this, look, because of this. Because of this. <laughs> the bridge pickup sits inside the bridge. And not only the bridge acts as a frame for the pickup, but it's all it also changes the pickup sound because these old uh, telestyle bridges are made of ordinary steel that alters the magnetic field of the pickup. And there is obviously a ton of improved designs, also improved designs available. Um, you know, most of them are made of different material, brass, stainless steel, aluminium, and it's, and it's all good. There's a lot of great stuff out there, <clears throat> especially, um, you know, um, these days there are so many manufacturers and, and it's, we are living the, the golden age of, of um, all types of gear available for us. And... Uh, yeah, but except if you want to stick to that archetype of a sound, of a classic Telecaster, that will 
um, that will narrow down your possibilities, your options quite a bit. And so we will now, just to kind of not go insane with all the all the different paths we could go, we could talk just about the Telecaster Bridge for this hour. But <laughs> we can do that at other time. So we're not gonna now gonna we're gonna probe down to that archetype sound, which leaves us with a smaller options, smaller amount of options. And I, I'm just I'm giving you some examples, a sort of like a vignette of certain basic things that that there is. First of all, there is the uh, obviously there is the um, what could you call that? You could call it the, the, the purest model, the, the, the very... Well, this is not actually even the, the purest model. I will show you the purest model, the, the really... Um, the original one is there. It kind of looks there as well, like those saddles would be slanted in some way, so they would not be straight. But I think this is the... the if they are straight, that's the very original, very original um, type of a Telecaster bridge. The one you see in the guitar I'm holding here, this is a Fender Custom Shop Tele. No caster, seems. There's no Telecaster there. <laughs> yeah, so there, there you have a little bit of improvement there. An attempt to make the... Um, you know the um, the intonation a bit better. This is a custom shop telly um, that I happen to be here that I happen to have here now from a customer for for maintenance, and it's it's a great guitar. Um, I think the relic work is done by. Um, done by Vince Conetto. And those of you who know the history of the Fender Custom Shop relicking process know that Vince Conetto is the guy who kind of came up with the whole idea back in the day. So regards to Vince, I have one of your relic guitars here. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's the purest model. And then, um, in attempt to make the, the intonation better back in the day, Fender came up with another kind of a design that looks like this, with six saddles, individual saddles for each strings. And whereas you could see this as an improvement, it also kind of proved itself not to be an improvement in every, in every way. And that is due to the fact that um, that this bridge or the saddles, there is one string pressing each saddle down. Travel uh, the strings each like obviously each string is traveling over the um, the saddle and and the pressure it provides to those tiny saddles there is is not so great and this results in a little bit of a flimsy design in a way that those those saddles easily travel sideways a bit they easily make unwanted noises like resonances and and things like that and it's a different sound from the original design where um you have three saddles made of brass and each string is pressing uh, two strings are pressing each saddle down so in this design the the pressure the pressure downwards for each saddle is twice as much and it makes the bridge even though it doesn't have any kind of a you know routed slots um, under the height adjustment screws to kind of align the saddles it doesn't have any of that it's a very simplistic design 
but due to the high pressure of those springs pressing the saddles down it's it's a rock solid um, construction and it is often the sound that is referred to as the the telly twang you kind of you know when digging just of that realm ever seen this it's pro may, might have been on the market for years I have no idea you tell me but I have so little time to follow up everything that I'm, I'll just show it to you here can you see that I'm gonna make it a bit bigger yeah so that's a fender bridge as far as I know a rather recent improvement where there are these little uh, little pieces of brass held in place as, as far as I can see held in place with a little set screws there um, and in this bridge you can set the intonation individually for each string even though you have the three um, only the three three saddles and when I saw this bridge just a few days ago when I started preparing to this uh, this broadcast I really like that so kudos for Fender for coming up with that even if it's not a new invention which I don't know you guys tell me <clears throat> you can tell that I've been on vacation I'm losing my voice after five minutes of talking so <laughs> let's hope I have some of it left after this um so anyways yeah I like that bridge and I'd like to try it at some point. I'm going to show you an, uh, another alternative that I found a long time ago, which is this one. I have it here. Yeah. So I hope the, the picture gets sharp when I bring it closer. Does it get sharp? Yes. Good. So there you have it. And in this design, as you can see, you can even see maybe wh how, what it reads. It says Wilkinson by Goto. It's a bridge uh, designed by Trev Wilkinson a long time ago. And I think it's a brilliant design that doesn't compromise the telly twang as as Pooh Ninja refers there as the ashray twang um, without compromising the sound you get the individual intonation for each string thanks to those swiveling saddles I don't know if you saw it right show it again if it just gets sharp get sharp now it's sharp So the saddle swivel there like that and you can set the intonation right I think this is a if you want that archetype tele twang sound and you think of a modern uh, alternative for that I think this is not not one of the worst ones one of the very best ones and if not the best one there is one thing that I think if people from Goto are uh, watching this video or somebody closely related people from Hosco or people from one of their one of their salespeople um, or if Trev Wilkinson is listening to this he could cut a piece off from here from the side of the ashtray like some other makers have done or manufacturers have done which would allow your hand kind of move a bit nicer maybe on the treble side maybe on both sides you could cut it down a bit from the edges I like the the ashtray it has that classic feel to it but for usability that would be a tiny little really nice improvement we've done that sometimes for customers that we cut it down 
It's quite a hard work to do it to, to a plated finished bridge and there's always signs from the, the, the mudding due to the you know grinding through the, the, the plating but um, anyways that's one way to do it. <laughs> so I can see Damien there saying Wilkinson best designs for bridges. Trevor Wilkinson hats off to Trevor Wilkinson. I love many Trevor Wilkinson's designs and since uh, Damien pointed it out I'll show another Wilkinson bridge that I love that is here for basis. Can you see that? No, it's so unsharp. Come sharp, 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 sharp. Okay. That's the one. There's a funny story to this bridge because when I found it together with when we were trying to find the perfect bridge for our steam base back uh, I think 15 years ago um, we were looking for something that would be provide or kind of contribute to the transparency of the tone, the musicality of the tone, dynamics, so the, the energy transference from the bass strings would be colored as little as possible by a heavy duty bridge. So we wanted a, a, a lightly built classic style bridge. But I had some concerns with those four individual um, saddles. And I know that that Fender back in the day, their first, the Telecaster bass bridge, I think I might have a picture of that. Do I? I don't. I thought I had. Here. There you have. So this is, this is what Fender had. It's a new rep like a reproduction model, but they had this in the Telecaster base back in the, the early 50s. Again, you compromise the intonation in that, but I thought that, you know, perfect bridge with the criteria that Marcus Setzer gave me. So I was thinking that it would be, it would be so beautiful to find um, a similar bridge for bass as for we are using in our Mojo model for the, the, the bridge I just showed you, the WT3 bridge by Trev Wilkinson, that one. And, you know, lo and behold, when I checked through an old Goto catalog, I found this bridge that I just showed you. I'm going to show it again. Just get sharp. Yeah. I found the bridge, so I contacted Goto um, and found out that they had discontinued it because it had been so unpopular. Another Trev Wilkinson design, but people didn't understand. It was, it was kind of, kind of vintage, but not. So it had just fallen between the seams, and nobody had kind of. Made, made anything out of it until we came along and so I asked Goto if they would be willing to make us this bridge despite the fact that they have discontinued it and to my amazement they, they agreed to do it so as long as I ordered <laughs> much I can't remember the amount it could have been 50, it could have been 100 bridges, maybe, but it was a lot of bridges considering that I didn't have a chance to try it. I had to order a lot of bridges and then just hope that it will be what I'm hoping for. You know. But I took the risk, I ordered those bridges and Marcus, Marcus, Setzer, Setzer, Marcus Setzer loved it. And... <laughs> You know, it's it's a very simple design, very simplistic design. 
to the extent that sometimes people think that it's a cheap bridge or, or like a cheapo, like a, you know, something like Chinese bridge or whatever, but it's actually a pretty valuable bridge and very well made bridge and, and contributes to the sound of the bass in exactly the way we hoped. So again, Trevor Wilkinson, um, I think you or Goto, Wilkinson is making parts with their own brand and they have licensed some of their parts to Goto. We are using the Goto parts. Um, currently, that's the all, all the all the Wilkinson parts we're using, but or Tre Trev Wilkinson design bar parts. But um, you know, I'm getting inquiries for this bridge from other luthiers. I'm getting inquiries from. Uh, players that would like to get this bridge and you know since we have this the availability availability is like non-existent we we don't sell the bridges out we we just tell everybody that hey you can buy a base <laughs> you get a you get a one bridge for free assembled into the base anyway so i think somebody should make that bridge um Damien says they are hard to copy. I know that you tried to make a bridge like that. I don't know if you've, did you did did ever did you did you go through with the plan? But you know, um, yeah, it's a pretty like it's a simple thing. But but there is the the mechanics how the the how the saddles swivel here. You need to make it right so so it works. You know. Um, Fine, fine engineering there. Um, yeah, okay, so we're gonna move on. So, Poonin just wondering. Why is that so small? Let's make it bigger. Poonin just wondering if they had the tooling still or if they made new ones. Very good question, I wouldn't know. But to this day, when I Google, this bridge it's called the what is it called does it have a name it has a name i can't remember it's some numbers and uh, numbers and letters in them w wb 2p or something like that anyways um you know, when I Google that, I can't find it anywhere. I just find it from our website, from our article, from our, our basis, from whatever. So, you know. Yeah. Somebody is asking about Floyd Rose. We're getting into that. I hope this is so, going so fast. It might be that we have to do two parts. We've just gone through the Telecaster bridge and it's already like almost half an hour gone. Okay, people, shut up so I can talk more. <laughs> uh, let's go to Stratocaster. And again, we'll stick to the archetype. Otherwise, this will all fall apart. We'll, or we'll spend the whole night discussing. Okay, so what is the archetype Strat Vibrato then? Well, I consider it to be... this can you see that picture i think you can see the picture it could be a bit bigger like so that is the archetype of a um fender vibrato fender vibrato this is what was uh, invented in the late 50s, early 90s, uh, early uh, late 50s, early 60s, and still is represented in in its endless reissued <clears throat> re vintage re reincarnations. Now, notice a lot of people talk about um, tremolo, but it's people. It is not a tremolo. The effect the arm does in this unit is vibrato. A tremolo would be something that alters the volume. Okay? <laughs> volume. <laughs> you know, whereas a vibrato alters the pitch of the notes. 
pitch of the notes, vibrato, volume, tremolo. So it's a, it's a vibrato. I also use sometimes the wrong term, but uh, the tremolo. But I, I try. I do my best not to. <laughs> okay, back to the topic. The archetype mounted to the body with six wood screws. It has hardened steel saddles bent to that shape and then hardened. It has steel sustain block. The pros of this design, it's, it is the unique effect it does, the vibrato, obviously. It also changes the, the overall sound of, a, of, of an electric guitar a lot, thanks to the routed cavity, thanks to the, the springs that act as a counterforce um uh, to the for the for the strings and 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 the cons of the design well i i feel the original design does have a few shortcomings and i'll go through those in a moment but first i just say that you know if you're having problems with your strat whammy regarding the tuning stability this issue most often is not a bridge related issue at all you know remember that remember that when you're when, when you're referring to um, you know other types of designs you know if you're if you're referring to uh, knife edge designs locking whammies whatever um, if you're having unusual um, tuning stability issues with a traditional design like this it is usually the nut, it's not the, the whammy, whammy bar, the whammy bar unit. I mean, it's possible it is there. It can be tired springs, it can be other things. Okay, we're not going into maintenance maintenance issues right now, deeper than that. I just want to point it out because people are easily kind of, um, you know, undermining what this type of a bridge is, maybe because it's, you know, mounted to the body with six wood screws and that that would be the source for um, potential tuning issues. But it's not the case, people. It's not the case. Usually it's not the case. Um, anyhow, another sort of a modern, I would say a modern Strat archetype vibrator would be the type that, uh, that swivels on two knife edge posts. Um, I will show you another picture like that. Well, this piece is, is, is a modern interpretation of that. This is, this is a part made by ABM in Germany. But the idea first came, as far as I know, I'm, I'm a bit of on, on thin ice here, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, the first this style vibrators um, were installed to the to the Fender American Standard Strats back in what late eighties or maybe early nineties latest for sure. I didn't see them in other guitars um, before that in any case. So I would say that the I mean. The, the knife edge came from kind of a kind of a around another design you know first there was the the vintage fender type and then then the Floyd Rose came in the late 70s we're gonna talk about that later I hope I hope we have time um, um, and then after the Floyd Rose design, the knife edge, the two post knife edge design seen in this ABM picture here as well. Um, that came after the Floyd Rose. And and it is, um, there, there are also many other other good ones of this style and, and other other bridges, good, st good, good stuff. My personal favorite brands would be the Goto 510s and um, some hip shot pieces and the ABM that I just showed. And this type of vibrato, it feels more sensitive. It feels more like a Floyd Rose when you're using it. It feels more sensitive. 
thanks to those knife edge posts, but it also sounds different because the the bridge plate in that uh, in that vibrator design it is isolated from the guitar body. You know, see the the only points in contact between the bridge and the body of the guitar are the are the two pivot screws. Um, where the the bridge is kind of you know swiveling like that, but the bridge isn't touching the body of the guitar at any other place than those knife edges and the end of the springs in the cavity. So it's kind of isolated in in a very similar in the exact same way as a Floyd Rose from the body. Floyd Rose is still different thanks to the locking nut, but from the body end of things, a knife edge non-locking vibrato um, sounds different from a vintage style. G and L early 80s. Thomas Lindgren. Nice to see you here. I is this your first episode you're seeing live? I think so. In any case, it's nice to see you here, and it's it's gonna be nice to see you in Finland in. I can't remember. Is it one month? I have it in my calendar, but looking forward anyways. Um, yeah. So. Um, so notice when I'm saying that the knife edge bridge sounds different. I'm not saying better. It sounds different. A more modern sound and feel. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Uh, but now we're gonna stick to that vintage archetype for a moment. So earlier I referred to to the possible cons in the classic design. Well, I see that there are a few. Um, the string spacing of a vintage Strat vibrato, it's, it's pretty wide considering the, the normal width of a Strat type guitar neck. And this results that the E strings, they sit pretty close to the to the edges of the fretboard, and so especially the high E can often easily slip off the frets, slip off the fretboard edge when playing. Thomas, you've been here before. Great, I just haven't seen. Sorry. Ah. Anyway. Um. Ah, no, October. Yes, October, not August, October. Good, but I have it in my calendar, I said. So, um, back to the topic. Sorry, guys. We can do a private business elsewhere with Thomas. Yeah, so... That's one not-so-great thing about um, a vintage Strat vibrato, I feel. Secondly, the saddles can move. I mean, they are there held with that that screw. There is one string per each saddle. The pressure, downwards pressure, isn't too great, so they can easily move. They can easily um, cause some unwanted noises, vibrations, things like that. Thirdly, the whammy arm has a threading, like a screw, and those threads You screw it in, like you know, and those threads are often a bit loose already in a new vibrator unit. And if not loose in the in a new unit, they always become loose in time. And uh, you know, this is not a great thing because it causes this slack to the arm. You know, there's this cluck 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 looseness in the arm. And it can be annoying. It's almost like having latency in the action of the arm, if you know what I mean. You know, you touch it, you kind of start moving it, and it doesn't react immediately because of the slack. So there's that latency. And, and personally, I don't like it. There are different kinds of ways to try to fix it. Some put tape around the arm and what whatnot, but, you know, hey, there are better, better ways to do it. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, And one more thing 
in a classic design, the saddle height adjustment screws can be sharp. It's easy to fix. Your local luthier, whoever they can, you know, they can um, they can shorten the screws so they don't feel sharp. But it they you know they easily because there is not so much window there how much you can adjust it because the threading in the saddles isn't too long so you you have to make it pretty precise and then when you want to adjust it later easily you kind of run out of threads on the screw so you know it's not a perfect thing little things you can live with them definitely and you know no big deal but but those little things that kind of make a difference and yeah So if you want to now, how would I say it? Um, you know, there are so many, now I'm going to quote unquote, improved products, vibrator models available. I have to say that a lot of them aren't really improvements. They're, they're, they're just different. And, and often, you know, there, there's gimmicky, um, improvements and surprisingly expensive units can be poorly made there can be tolerance issues and things like that so um, but there are there are quite a few great ones I'm sure and you know I found my own favorite favorites but you know when 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 you want to kind of stick to that archetype vintage sound you know if you want to keep all the good stuff of the vintage design the classic sound that sturdy feel of the original design where the where the bridge plate is resting on the top of the guitar and the energy transfers into the body um, from that whole plate being pressed down by the springs by the strings you know pretty hard and you, you kind of you feel the body the, the vibration of the body much stronger in a guitar like this guitar with the with a with the six wood screws and the plate resting on the top, top of the guitar or the body of the guitar and you know if you know if you want to keep that classic sound the sturdy feel that all that and you want to at the same time eliminate the not so perfect details then again, there there aren't a whole lot of options. There can be ones that I'm not aware, and there there most likely is because I'm I'm totally not following these things like all the time in real time. What what, what kind of developments is coming and going? Um, but since one of my criteria also like you know sticking to uh, well designed good pieces of hardware has always been the, the longevity the availability that it's something that is kind of established that you can kind of you know rely on it if i'm going to start using a piece of hardware i i would like to see it being made you know 5 years from now 10 years from now i hope you know so that's also one criteria that kind of narrows down the options very easily and so anyways my favorite one kind of really genuinely um Keeping all the good stuff, eliminating all the bad stuff is another Trev Wilkinson design. It's this one. The, does it come sharp if I come close enough? Maybe. No. Come on. There it is. Later, the people who are going to listen to this this audio track as podcasts, they're going to be like, oh, now he's showing again some pictures and now we can't see it. Well, to you guys who are listening to, to the podcast, <laughs> go find this episode. It's the same number, episode 11. You can find it from YouTube and then you can see the picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and... Why do I think this is better? Earlier I told you a few of the cons or the, the main concerns I have of the vintage design and the string spacing. Well, in the VSVG, Wilkinson, Trev Wilkinson Bridge 
manufactured by Goto in Japan. They made it narrower, just the right way, not too narrow, not too wide. It's narrower just so that in a, in a standard um, bolt-on neck design, you know, with the neck measurements being somewhat there in the kind of uh, industry industry standard realm, this will work better. So that's one thing. Secondly, the saddles of this one cannot move because they are locked after the adjustments. They're locked down and still regarding the sound, it has the steel sustain block just like the vintage design. It has hardened steel saddles that are bent. Probably won't get sharp. Oh, you can't see it. You can see it. Great. So they are like that. Um, so they can't move. You can't have any unwanted noises like that. Okay, you can have if you have a screw loose in there, but that you can just tighten and you can get rid of it very easily. Third, the arm has no threading. It's just pushed into a nylon bushing like that. And the best of best thing of all is that there's a little set screw here hidden into the sustain block where you can adjust the tightness of the of the arm. So it's a great thing. You know, whenever it comes, whenever you use it a lot and it becomes loose, you can tighten it a little bit and it'll be like new. It'll you know get rid of that that slack. So I like that. Um, and fourth, there is no screws that feel sharp because they are hidden into the saddles. Let's try again. If it becomes sharp, yeah. So look, the threading is on the underside of the saddle, not on the top side of the saddle. So when you're adjusting it, adjusting it in from the bottom end. I mean, you adjust it from the top, but the screw is threaded to the bottom end of the saddle. So there, there is no situation where the screw would raise above the surface of the saddle and hurt your soft skin. <laughs> soft artist skin. Yeah. So, so there you go. That's why I think from the vintage style bridges, this is a, is a really great one. There are questions here coming. Um, let me see. What happens to the frequency is six screws versus two post floating bridge. Well, frequencies, frequencies, depends on what you play, what, you know, it depends on so many things, but I would say that the, the, the main audible difference is that, that the, the vibration from the, the strings from the bridge transfers into the guitar body in a different way in a, in a vintage six screw design. And it makes the body vibrate more and fuller and and then the the energy feedback you know back from the body when you're playing amplified and when you're playing loud and the whole room is vibrating and it feeds your guitar body to vibrate even more that vibration transfers into the bridge and to the strings in a different way in a in a two you know pivot screw design from a six screw vintage design again not better, not worse, different. Both are good. There are people who love the more modern. There are people who love for, for many reasons. You know, there are players who don't like the more sturdy, the more kind of heavier feel of this when, you, when you're moving it. They want it to be more sensitive. They want to play kind of really sensitive, a tiny bit of movement and it easily moves kind of like a race car thing like Jeff Beck does is with, with his vibrator you know with, that that is the American standard type with uh, with the knife edges 
And I love what Jeff Beck does with a Strat. So how can you argue against that? It's, it's a good design as well, but it's different. But now we were talking about the, the vintage archetype. Oh my God, it's it's that late. It's 10 to the off. Yeah. Super V Blade Runner. Oh. Let me see. What do we have next? Oh my God. We haven't even gotten to the wraparound bridges. We haven't gotten to the two nomadics. We haven't gotten to walking whammy bars. People, where should we go from here? Where should we go from here? Um, I have an idea. We talk about, since we were now covering the topic of, of whammy bars, let's talk about Floyd Rose and locking whammy bar. And we're going to do a part two where we talk about isn't that pretty clear cut you know then we cover more the fender -ish, fender esque stuff whatever you call it and we go to the gibson gibson-esque stuff later on with the wraparounds with the two nomadics with the bixby you know alterations of vibrators things like that so i think we could do it like that and in that case i think i have time to answer to this question Shaggy's faction. Any talk of the Super V Blade Runner tremolo yet? Any thoughts on it? Um, yes, I have installed a couple of these, and I have I have nothing against it. It's it's a very interesting design. I think that um, what was surprising to me in this design is that. Um, You know, the the spring steel, I don't have a picture for you guys now of this design here, the Super V Blade Runner, but um, it is basically, it's, it's a Fender Vibrato evolution type of bridge where um, the front edge of the, of the bridge is screwed directly to the body tightly so the front edge doesn't move the rest of the bridge moves and and between that front edge piece of steel and the rest of the bridge there's there's a slate of of um spring steel that bends when you do the the action it, it bends back and forth like that and what was surprising to me in that when i when i when i've installed those couple of bridges years ago was how how sensitive it was it was very sort of you know the flutter effect on that bridge was kind of overwhelming it was spring steel is so thin that it kind of flutters a lot when you keep the the, the tremolo floating and that was that was surprising to me. I, I didn't expect that. And that, again, not saying that it's um, it's a bad thing, but maybe it's so unusual that, that it hasn't, maybe that's why it hasn't become, I don't know if that's why it hasn't become uh, more, more popular or more common to see that. But, but I was kind of what I was expecting from the feel of it, that if they would, it's okay, if there are people from Super V, Blade Runner design people, or if if this uh, video ever reaches your ears and eyes, um, I would have an idea for you guys that you, you know if you would replace that spring steel piece there with a tiny bit thicker piece, you know you might you might be you might be surprised. It could be it could be great because what I felt. You know, I was kind of expecting because this bridge is kind of, you know, it's fixed to the body with the with the, with the front end. So I was kind of hoping that uh, it would have this really characteristic, like strong acoustic 
tone in the guitar. You know, I was kind of hoping better energy transference between the bridge to the body than from a vintage Fender design, but but it was it was less so. You know, the vintage style with six screws is still kind of stronger in that way. So that was for me a bit of a letdown. I think it's a well made this well made bridge, so nothing nothing against that. I don't know where where they where they make them. I haven't really. Um, dug into that so deeply but you know so okay we're gonna move now to locking whammy yeah we have a lot of things to cover if we want to do something let's see how this locking how, how fast i can talk with the locking whammy if we could do one bonus thing <laughs> an extended time for those of you who want to hang 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 along you know after one hour but i, I might have one one thing that you know, would be interesting to cover, but, um, but let's see, I have here lots of these stuff, lots of this stuff here. Okay. Locking whammy, you know, back to the late 90, 1970s. And what is interesting to me, first of all, um, um, I'm sorry guys. I'm at the same time reading Shaggy's factions comments. I'm going to stop reading your comments. <laughs> so I can focus to what I'm supposed to say. Okay, so, you know, the so-called mainstream electric guitar has remained fundamentally unchanged since the 1950s, which is crazy to me somehow. With one exception, you know. You know, if you think of it, you know, Okay, there are all kinds of oddities, all kinds of like smaller phenomenons from over the decades, sure. And maybe in the modern era there there are even some some guitar designs that are about to become part of the mainstream, part of the popular industrial standards. But if you think of it, since the 50s, what has changed? You know, humbucker was invented only already in the 50s. You know, those, the Telecasters, the Strats, you know, most of these things, you know, the guitars, Explorers, these are old from the 50s, from the early 60s. So, you know, um, with one exception, up until today, the electric guitar, the mainstream electric guitar has remained fundamentally unchanged, except for Floyd Rose. You know, it's the first genuinely different vibrator system, different kind of it changed the, the the way the guitar could be used you know and it in fact became one of the popular standards and it has held its position i think that's very rare so whether you like a double locking whammy system or not i would like to show my appreciation hats off to mr floyd d rose who came up with the idea already back in 19 i think 1976 he had the first prototypes but you know the first patent was 1979 and not very long after that you started seeing those guitars eddie van halen you name it and then it, you know it, it developed into all kinds of directions but anyways i i think it's a it's a very cool thing that that it came to be and like I often say about guitars, you know, what is a great guitar? People are asking me and people are arguing about it. What is a great guitar? What is the best guitar design? Whatever. What are the best pickup designs? What are the best vibrators? Whatever. And I always keep saying to people, you know, the gr what is a great guitar? Great guitar is something that, you know, inspires you to play. Great guitar is something that you don't want to put down. Great guitar is something that you know, you find new songs, new music from it. You know, it kind of urges you to become better. That's a that's a good guitar. It's, I think it's a the ultimate great. You know, the the perfect um, kind of statement of you know aligning the frames the idea of a great guitar. And people, it doesn't have anything to do with the brand of the guitar or the 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 the, the price tag of the guitar the age of the guitar, whatever, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with that stuff. 
if, if the guitar inspires you, it's a great guitar. And in that regard, Floyd Rose with the double locking thing, I mean, it's been very inspiring to a very large amount of, of super talented players. And I think that's, that's just, that's just great. And so let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. Um, the original company, Floyd Rose, okay, it still exists. And the question remains if it still is the best locking whammy because it's the original, you know, because there are alternatives. We all know that. Well, if, if you're a shredder, first of all, I mean, if you're a shredder, if you're into Ibanez guitars, and there's nothing wrong with that, mind you, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're a shredder, if you like a double logging whammy, if you're into Ibanez guitars, you know what your options are. They have their own. Ibanez makes their interpretations of, of this gadget and, and they're very good quality. At the same time, they're very much branded, labeled into the Ibanez guitar brand, so others don't use them in larger scale. Some smaller builders obviously use it when they make something like, you know, gem inspired or whatever, so they're using the, the, the low pro and, and stuff. And the low pro is good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a good one, very strong labeled into the Ibanez guitar brand. And so for the rest of us, Floyd Rose is the biggest one. I have here one Floyd Rose bridge, whammy bar. Let's see if, it, can, can we get it? Yeah, no, it's no, it's sharp. Um, this is a seven string one. And um, is this the best one? Well, I'd like to point out a few shortcomings. Because <laughs> I'm very particular with these things, with my, my guitars, with what I put to, put into my guitars. And there is particularly one thing that I, I've never really liked about any of the Floyd Rose, Floyd Rose designs. Um, that I, I would really love that they, they, if they would get rid of that, if they re replace it with a better system. And it's, it's the way the, 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 the arm mounts to the body of the of the unit there's that bracket there and you screw it down like that you would kind of think that it's 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 it works but in time it always becomes loose it, you know when you're using it when you have it resting down you bring it up and it goes down you bring it up this nut keeps loosening <laughs> and you need to tighten it and tighten it and tighten it. And now I'm going to say hello to Kingsley Durant. Actually, you know, no apologies, first of all, needed. And I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of wraparound bridges, about tuna and stuff including roller tunomatics. I'm going to tell our story about it, but I won't do it today. I will do it in one week. We're going to do a second part, the part two <laughs> tunomatic wraparound special or whatever you call it. So if you can be here in one week from now, that's when we're going to talk about that stuff. Now we're going to focus a little, little while into the wild 80s and whatever came after that, the locking whammy bars. Um, so anyways, back to the topic. Yeah, this nut, it keeps loosening. And there is, I think it used to be like back in the 90s when I started first installing Floyd Rose original whammy bars, I think they were better. I think the, 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 the tolerance with the arm the mounting of the arm was tighter and there wasn't this slack because nowadays a lot of these have no matter how tight you put it put it you have that slack in the arm and that's something that ah, it's just not quality and I hope they've already fixed this you know this part that I have here in my hands we only use Floyd Rose for seven string guitars and this I bought a couple of years ago, and I have complained to the manufacturer about this 
this detail that I find a, a defect. I find it as, a, as an inferior detail in, a, in an expensive piece of gear. It shouldn't be there. So that's... Uh, <laughs> you know, but other than that, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, there's a couple of things that... Uh, should I mention them? Yes, I should. Of course I should. So one of them is the the way they do the, the, the knife edge. In the original Floyd Rose, the, the knife edge of the bridge, it's the, the base plate of the unit, it's hardened steel, and the knife edge is done sharp. There's no, there's no radius at the edge of it, it's just sharp which in theory it is the best way to do it you know it is the best way to do it because you know it's the same idea as when you have um, um, certain types of bearings with the I can't remember what's the name of that in uh, in English though ah, escapes my mind but anyways, you know, th th there is when it's sharp and the, you have the, the post with a slot where it kind of drops and there's the sh that sharp knife edge and it swivels around it. That's the, the least amount of friction you can have there when it's sharp. And if it only would stay that way, you know, over time, there would be nothing wrong with it. But the reality is that these parts are, first of all, they're plated. This is a chrome plated one. There's always a plating and the plating chips off from that sharp edge in no time. In, you know, the first minute you're using the whammy arm, the plating has already chipped off. So it's already kind of less than the theoretical perfect it can be. And if that would be the only thing chipping off from the edge, it would still be tolerable. But Floyd Rose is known for holding its tuning. The tuning stability is, is great in a new unit, but over time it declines. So the older the unit, the less stable the tuning. And it is because this sharp edge kind of it wears or it doesn't even wear it kind of more there comes a little cracks to that sharp edge if you can think of it you know think of a knife and you're you're grinding that knife against metal like that you know in no time you're gonna start kind of chipping off little bits and pieces there so that's kind of a something that I mean, it's. It, I think it's kind of tolerable. It's something that you can live with, but, but again, there are better ways to do that. So I think it's less than perfect there. And another thing, it's more, this is not actually a defect. It's more a, a matter of opinion, a, a matter of taste. But I'm gonna take another type. Ah, Kalers. Guys, I now people are starting to talk about Kalers. We're not going to cover Kalers today, but I think there's some pretty interesting stuff they did. And they, they had some really nice innovation going on. Somebody mentioned something about Goto Floyd. I may have a Goto Floyd in my hands. You're going to see it in a minute. But here, um, you can see one detail. Now, look at the difference between the intonation screws. How am I gonna, wait. Okay. <laughs> okay, as you can see, <laughs> this one here, the original Floyd Rose, the intonation screws here, they're sitting at 90 degree angle upward like that. And in this unit, which may soon be revealed to be a Koto unit, they are sitting at an angle backwards like that. And they're kind of further away 
that much further away from your arm. So what I mean is this. So when you're mute palming your strings, so you know you're you you're having your your hand over these intonation screws. One, they can turn. Two, they can feel annoying to some players. Some pro players have been um, complaining about that in the original Floyd Rose. They have an alternate design. The the Floyd Rose is it called the Floyd Rose Pro? I think that is lower that you don't have this but that bridge has kind of another type of issues due to the, the the design of the saddles the cast saddles that tend to break or yeah and it has the the pro unit has never become again an industry standard so it's a little bit difficult you know can you get the spare parts if something breaks it's not so easy to get it's very expensive yeah, a lot of decisions to make in there. So I'm going to talk about the improvements. Um, Poo Ninja says, It's not wrong of me to sharpen my flaws every now and then. No, it's not. Keep doing it. That's what we do for our customers too. <laughs> yeah, there are uh, diamond files that can be used for that. But let's not talk about guitar repair now. Uh, what else here? Okay, let's just move on because we are already on overtime. Damn it! So, this unit here, can we get it sharp please? Camera, camera, sharpen it. Thank you. Goto Japan. There you have it. Um, okay, we already covered that intonation screw thing, but what Goto does with their uh, the knife edges here, this gentleman called Kipponi, I'm assuming he's from Finland, maybe from Japan, Finland, <laughs> could be either one, could be something else too. Uh, he says, like dull knives. Okay, so you're referring to the comment I said earlier. Yes, like dull knives. But look, Goto does their knife edges like dull knives from the beginning. So they do a small radius to the edges. They do a small radius both to the bridge, base plate, and a matching radius to the post. So, theoretically, there's more friction in this than in the Floyd Rose, in the sharp knife edge. But the reality is that this thing holds the tuning better. <laughs> and it holds it radically better over time. You know, maybe within the, when, you, when you're comparing, you know, uh, an original Floyd Rose you know, after or within the first hour of its use, after it's like a new unit is installed. It could be that original Floyd Rose hold its tuning better for a little while, but after that it's already kind of same as this, and then when time goes by it's worse than this. So this is something that you know it doesn't hold when if you're starting if if you're using a super accurate tuner and you're really challenging this with bomb dives and you know things like that you can see that it doesn't hold the tuning absolutely but in in real life when you're playing the thing you don't I mean you don't play like that you play you, you do the dive and then you continue playing and this thing the the, the the tuning returns within the next seconds when you just continue playing so so this is really um, I would say an improvement in that way and and I've discussed of this matter with John sir many times we've exchanged emails about these things that Goto does with their hardware they do the same thing in their um, non-locking you know knife edge bridges and yeah it's it's something that 
Goto does very well. And they've selected the, the types of steels that they use in, in here. They've also selected carefully. So, okay, in these also, the, the, the plating does chip off. But after that, it remains really mu like more or less unchanged years and years and years. And I have witnessed this in a lot of professionals' guitars um, that we ma made for them. Namely, for example, Matthias Kupiainen from Stratovarius. He has had um, our uh, Goto Floyd Rose equipped guitars in his use for, I don't know how long, very long time. And we've never had to touch those knife edges, you know. And he uses them a lot and travels with the guitars and, you know. Yeah, so that's my take on um, on that. I mean, there are other things. There are some limitations if, if one continues the, 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 the original Floyd Rose radius. The string radius is a bit different. As far as I can remember, the standard, what they are selling, it's 16-inch 16, 16 radius, and they have several different types of, um, of locking nuts where you can choose, so you can maybe do compound radius if you want. Whereas the, um, or maybe the original Floyd Rose has something else than 16. I can't remember. <laughs> I admit, I can't remember. Sorry. An amateur. But what I do know is that the, the Goto Floyd, it's not a Goto Floyd, the Goto Locking Whammy, um, it has 16 inch radius, both in the nut and in the, in the bridge unit. It's fixed. You can change it from the bridge end with shims, but I never want to do it if, if not absolutely necessary, if somebody doesn't just really need it in their guitar, but I don't like to do it because, you know, the less such moving parts fixes, the more reliable it will be over time. So, yeah, that's about that. So, we are past one hour. We are one hour, 15 minutes. I don't think we have time for my special surprise element, which was the Evertune bridge. The Evertune. I would have wanted to say a few words about Evertune. So for you guys who are interested in my opinion about the Evertune bridge, if you don't know what an Evertune bridge is, I'm going to write the name here to the chat, Evertune bridge. Um, go Google it, find videos, and next week you'll hear what I think of it, a deal. Will I see you here? Will you invite your friends also who like Evertune or, or don't like Evertune or whatever? Please invite your friends. Please, if you enjoyed the video, like it. If you aren't a subscriber yet, subscribe to the channel. Share to your friends. And, you know, let's make the world a better place together. <clears throat> and uh, to these words, stay safe. Take care. We will see in one week great to have so many of you here after after the little break we had and now continuing with <sighs> regain spirits regain strength see you next week <laughs>